today. Aaron here from Arming the Nation Training. Today I'm heading up to Cardwell to see a friend of mine, Barry Lansdowne, who has a wealth of knowledge on black powder and muzzle loading firearms. Today I'm going to do a video about how to load muzzle loading firearms, about the history of muzzle loading firearms, and actually firing of the muzzle loading firearm. So once I go up to Barry's place, I'll introduce you to Barry and show you all about muzzle loading firearms. I'll catch you up in Cardwell. Finally made it, Barry. Yeah, good to see you. Good to see you, Dad. Yeah. I call Barry Dad. He's my um, adopted father of the North. <laughs> yeah, that went back to uh, the Norfolk Island uh, trip. That did. Well. Now, what I'm going to do today, I'm going to shoot my Tryon. It's uh, 54 calibre percussion lock. It uh, is made a rep. It is a replica of an original, owned by Lord Tryon and when he went out to Americas in the 1800s. And I've mixed up a duplicate load of black powder and Pyrodex. Pyrodex is a substitute black powder. And I'm just going to see how well it shoots with the 50-50 load. I've already cleaned the, the weapon out. I, I put shellite down them and dry it out because shellite doesn't leave any moisture behind, unlike metho, if once the, the uh, fluorocarbon bit goes, it leaves moisture behind. So I use shellite to clean the barrel. And the first thing I've, you've got to do when you come, or you're going to shoot, before you shoot, you've got to cap off a couple of times. I've got these little caps here that go on the nipple, cock it back, put it on and I always cap off a couple. Why is that Barry? Why? To ensure that the nipple is free of any oil residue that may be in there. And so that would make sure that the barrel's seasoned ready to go for when you load it, would it? That's it. Okay. First thing I do, all your loads must be in an individual container. So Barry, we'll load the firearm now. Show, show the people how you'd load this firearm. Right, first and foremost, eye protection and ear protection. That's good, see? Firearm safety. Love it. All loads come individually packed so there is no ignition. Did they used to load from a powder horn? used to horn? load from a powder flask like this or a powder horn. Okay. Uh, this is not gunpowder, this is polenta. It's a filler. What I do is I put polenta on top of my, car, uh, my charge. Why is that, Barry? Because I like to use really wet patches. Okay. And I can shoot all day with these wet patches without having to clean the gun at all. And what are the patches wet with? Combination of uh, dishwashing liquid, uh, dishwashing liquid, soluble oil and a bit of ammonia. So um, the reason the reason why the polenta is there is to take up the moisture which could dampen your powder charge, That's is that correct? correct? It'll vary the charge considerably, okay. especially if you're having competitions such as uh, timed events. So that round ball there, what calibre is that Barry? This is a 527 round ball for a 54 calibre gun. Okay, so it's just that bit oversized. It's very oversized. I can see that by the tapping going on. And 
That'll bed into the rifling quite nicely. It does. It's actually the patch that takes up the rifling. Now notice how Barry is making sure that the ball is fully down in the base of the firearm, like I've said in my courses. Must Very be, important. Must be seated onto the ball itself, otherwise you can bulge the barrel or blow the barrel up. That's exactly right. So now we're going to do the live firing, are we? Yep. So what would you do now to... I put the cap on the, the nipple. Yep. Make sure it's firm. Oh, yep, there it is. And then I'm going to set me trigger. Okay, so you'll set the trigger. How do you... I've just cocked it back and it's set. I heard it click. Yeah. And so yeah. what are you shooting at, that target that, down there? Blue target. Ooh, look at the smoke. Nothing like the smell of black powder, eh? <laughs> now that... That is the 50-50 load, so it went quite well, really. So when you say 50-50 load, if you were to load that with just black powder, with a heavier charge, would it be go obviously go quicker, wouldn't it? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Pirate X and, black pa and original black powder are very similar. They've made them so close, and it's not uncommon for people to use the black powder, because sometimes Pyrodex won't, won't fire well or start up well with just these caps. Okay. That's why they've made what they call an inline cap, which they use a shotgun primer now. Yep. And you can use your Pyrodex straight on to that high uh, percussion cap, yep. and you get a constant shoot all the time, whereas this one, I'm not. Do you want to go out and have a look and see where we hit? Yep, we'll go and have a look. If we hit it. So Barry, we've just come down to the target. I take it that you're aiming for the middle dot? Because I know black powders aren't very accurate. No, I was aiming at these dots here because I was expecting, expecting it to shoot high because I'm only 40 metres away. No, you weren't. You were aiming at the middle one, weren't you? No, I was aiming <laughs> down here. This isn't clay shooting, eh? You can't, you can't fake it. No, that's it. Well, there you go. So that was with a round ball. What calibre did you say it was? 527 round ball. Very impressed. Patched round ball. I'm actually quite impressed that that shot that accurate. Oh, this, this thing shoots very accurately. Okay. So Barry, after firing that shot, how would you safely reload this again? Okay, I've removed the old percussion cap off there. Yep. The gun's now in half cock. Yep. And I'll leave it there. I know from experience there is nothing down in there, no cinders, no nothing, because I use such wet patches. It just, there's nothing going to be alive down there. So I can just take it back over here and start reloading again. And that's why, that is why we have to be so careful, especially with the black powder loading the second time, because there could be smouldering embers still up the barrel. And as I've said in my courses, that black powder is very volatile, and the slightest spark or ember will ignite it. Put the old calendar on top again, so I, I can use the wettest of wet patches. There's your wet patch. There's two there. So put that on there. Sorry. There's a little sprue thing on on the round ball and you try and use this put the sprue in the center. How would have the old pioneers tap that ball in without a hammer? Do they actually have a hammer or do they do no, exactly they what use they would have used what they call a starter, but their ball would have been much, much looser. Oh, okay. And the material that they used would be much oh, thinner. Oh, I see. Yep, got it. I use it tight to get the accuracy. Well, I can see that. I was blown away with how accurate it was. I wasn't expecting it to hit the paper. That's it, rammed and all the way in. The ball's definitely against the powder. Pick up a cap. Yep. And then you go back to your firing position. Uh, 
You'll have, you're going to have to fire a shot off Moses' staff, eh? Yeah. Okay, so I've got that one. I, I fired it off before at Moses' staff, didn't I? I can't remember. <laughs> All right, we'll walk down and check the target. Right, here's the patch. And as you can see, the patch where the material has engaged in the lands and grooves. It just shows how tight that really and is. There is no blowing out of the patch, so I'm getting good, consistent uh, rotation of the ball down the barrel. So the accuracy should be there. Oh, well, I hope so. I was amazed. I reckon your first shot was a fluke, though. But we'll see. Otherwise, I might go back to these Noah's Ark guns. Well, there you are. Side by Holy side. Holy moly. That's unbelievable. If you had told me that, I wouldn't have believed it, Barry. That's an unreal group. Unreal. You want to do a third shot? Yeah, we'll do a third. Okay, so we're going to do the third shot now, are we? Yep. All right. We'll set the trigger. Unreal. We'll go down and check that group, eh? Yep. I'll just done take the primer off, put it the half cock. Alright, yep, so it's definitely clear before we walk down there. Yep. Right. Now the half cock is not a safety thing. It's just the half cock. Although you can't fire it on half cock, they advertise in all the material, the half cock is not a safety feature of a gun. Alright, yep, and I witnessed you fire it, it was definitely clear there's nothing in there so we're safe to go forward. Yep. Righto. So Barry, why well, is that shot off a little bit? It's oh, still pretty just... accurate. Is that the rifle or is that old age? Ah, uh, just me. <laughs> just me. <laughs> I'm pretty impressed though mate, like at 45 metres to be able to pull a group like that through something made back well over 150 years ago, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, they were, they were super accurate back in their day. Okay, so we've just loaded up again, and you've loaded it with a magnum charge this time, have yeah, you? Yeah, it's, it's about 95 grains. 95 grains of 3F black powder? Yep. And so you use 3F powder in a rifle still? I use 3F powder in everything. Okay. Always why, have. Why is that? I think it burns more consistent. Okay. All right. Let's fire and three get better, get better results. Yeah, that was definitely louder. <laughs> and you can see the bullet from here. Gee, that's not as accurate with the magnum load battery. It's quite high and up at sort of 12, 30, 1 o'clock. Why is that? Well, because the magnum load it's faster, it'll shoot higher trajectory, so to if, if I'd shot these loads all the time I'd probably be able to get them into the centre point, but because it's, I'm using, normally use 50 grains, right, and I zero the gun to 50 grains, as soon as you go overloading you're going to shoot much higher, and if this wasn't such an accurate rifle this bullet might not be here. It could be way up here somewhere. Right. And so you don't need to have them going super fast. Actually, more accuracy when you slow them down, Barry. I, f I find with this gun, 
I slow it down to 50 to 70 grains. Uh, I'll use 50 at 50 metres and I'll use 70 at 100 metres. And just pumping it up with more powder doesn't make it more accurate. I think it throws the ball around a little bit more. So what have you found when you've chronographed them? That load that you shot down on the bottom target, which is 50 to 60 grains of powder, you were saying, yeah, how, um, how fast roughly is that going at an you know, approximate? It's around about eight, 900 feet per second. Right, but this top one here would be going nearly about, at 1,000. Yeah, it'd be going over 1,000 feet, probably 1,100 feet per second. Okay, so it is proofs in the pudding that you, a slower round will pull a tighter group. Yes, in this particular gun, that's the case, I've found. Okay. So, yeah, if you get into muzzle-loading shooting, definitely proof to test fire different amounts of powder charge to see which more accurate group you'll get out of your With the muzzle three loader. bander, which is the Parker Hale 577, the, which was used during the American Civil War pr primarily, the, they shoot those in England today at 1,300 metres. Okay. And they're using loads of 120, 130 grains of black powder. 2F, which is slower burning, but the it isn't round ball, it's a conical bullet. It's like the shape of a normal bullet head. And they lay on their back and put the rifle through their feet with this great sight. And the barrel is on an attitude of nearly 30 degree angle to the target and when they fire it takes about three and a half to four seconds before you actually hear the whack into the target area and they okay. use a six foot by six foot target so we might um we've done the shooting now we might um get you to show everybody some of your muzzle loading firearms yep so what's the first firearm you have here barry this is the flintlock this is a 45 calibre Thompson Centre flintlock. This is around about the, the 17, 1700s right through to the, about the 1810, 1820 when they left, finished the flintlock and went to the percussion lock. Is it a replica or a reproduction? No, this is a real, real made by Thompson Centre. It's not a, a replica of a, 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 an old one. It's a, ones they made up for the American muzzle-loading market and uh, lifetime guarantee. So what calibre is it? 45. Barrel length? Uh, 28 inches, 26 inches. Okay, right. And it's a flintlock. And this is a flintlock. You load it like the others except the firing mechanism you put powder in the pan here, you pull your frizzen down, again, double set triggers back in the late 1700s, you cock it, and when you fire your spark off the flint ignites your powder. Obviously we can't see the spark because we're out in bright sunny day. Yeah, but, but there's certainly a lot of spark there. Right, eh? So what was the other, what's the um, other firearm down there that you've got there? Okay, this one here is a Beretta. Beretta shotgun, I shoot with Berettas. Beretta shotgun, this, this is an original. It's not, it's not designed on anything back in the early 1800s. It was designed in 1980 to, for Beretta, to put on the market to uh, celebrate their 300 years of selling firearms. From 1680, Beretta used to make uh, barrels and sell them around the European market in the 1500s. In 1680, Beretta made their first gun and put it on the market. And then, so they made this tricentennial shotgun to celebrate their 300 years of manufacturing firearms. Only 1,000 made, and I have this, they come in a box with all special flasks, uh, rods, 
loading tools and so stuff a, like that. That's a 12 bore, isn't this it? This is a 12 gauge shotgun. Right, a 12 bore, there you go. Cylinder bore. And it's percussion lock like the others. Beautiful. Alright. Yep. Okay, this one here is the 1853 Enfield. Holy moly, long barrel. Oh, look at how long that is. 39 inch barrel. This is what they used during the American Civil War. Is that Daniel Boone's gun? No. <laughs> <laughs> Much later than Daniel Boone. <laughs> this is what the American Civil War were used on both sides. It's a 58 caliber. If you have a look there, it's quite a large caliber. Yeah, very big. And it fires a 575 conical bullet. It's 577 in caliber, but they used an undersized bullet so they could load it faster. And it didn't have to be cleaned after every shot. Very accurate. These are the ones that I was talking about before about shooting out to 1300 meters in England. They put a great big sight on the tang here. It sits up about that high. They lay on the ground and fire, sight it like that. And quite accurate. They can hit a six by six target at 11, 12, 1300 meters. The bullet, because the bullet was undersized too, when they fired this in Civil War movies, you'll see carts out at them, out at the uh, aid station, full of arms and legs. Well, because the bullet was undersized, it had sometimes it'd come out and would spin like a top. So when it hit, it basically amputated, or did so much damage they had to amputate. Oh yeah, and the last one. And this one, this this one's the try on that we just used. Oh, that was the one we were firing with, wasn't it? This is the one it? we were firing. So where was that made again, Barry? This one is, is a replica made by Pedasoli in Italy. But the original, I believe, was made in England for Lord Tryon, who when he went out to the Americas, he actually got American gunsmiths to make up similar ones. And the family took the, one of the originals back to Pedasoli. It's nice engraving on the side, isn't and it? Pedasoli built this gun for them on the proviso that he could continue manufacturing them and sell them on the open market, the replica on the open market. Oh, thanks for that, Barry. So, all we'll do now is we'll clean it. You can show us how to clean it, Dad, and we'll be right, eh? Yep. So, for cleaning of this firearm, Barry, what would you do first? First thing I do is remove the tenon pins. These things are called tenon pins. They keep the barrel into your stock. So I remove the stock with the barrel from the stock. Yeah, that's easy to take out, isn't it? Really easy. Next thing I'll do is remove the nipple. What nipple is that? Oh, yep, yeah, the, the nipple. percussion cap nipple. Yeah, percussion cap nipple. And I just let it fall straight into the water. That's just wa water down there. Normal water. Yep. Normal water. Yep. Okay, next thing I do is wet the old patch down really wet. So what is that? Just a bit of rag? Just a bit of 4B2, what they call 4B2. And I just run it up and down now. And you'll see that. How many times do you do that? Uh, I'll do it until you watch when I start bringing it up. See how it's got a little bit of dirt in there? That water's actually getting quite dark. I can see the black powder flakes in the water. What I'll do is I'll pull that up and I normally have a quick look down the flash hole there to see that it's not got any. And if it hasn't, then I'll blow it out. So you just keep doing that till it comes clean, clean do you? Yep. Okay, so you keep going till it's clean. So once I get all the water out of it, the top of it and the bottom of it, I come over to my soluble oil and water solution. So that's soluble oil like, like lathe compound, eh? Yes, it is exactly the same. 
lathe compound. Okay. And this has been in here about eight years. All oh, right. And why do you like to use soluble oil? Because it, if I didn't use soluble oil, because what I do now is I would put the barrel upside down for a few minutes and just let it drain off. Now if I didn't have soluble oil, it'd go rusty, no time at all, It'd start rusting. Straight away? Pretty well. Okay. So... Especially up here in the tropics. Yes. So then I just get out the nipple and blow it, clean it. So I'll leave that like that for a few minutes and then Okay, the last thing you do is just pick the stock up and you've got your lock and you need to just clean out the percussion hammer. What are you using to clean that? Toothbrush. No, there's no need to go. And once I've got it clean, just use your damp rag to wipe any excess black powder that may be on there. Now that's ready, that's cleaned, ready to be oiled and So now what would you do? I'm just going to get rid of all the water now. So what are you using there? WD? WD-40. Yep. And I will put it, get it, get it out of the flash hole, all along the gun, get rid of the... You know you use soluble oil, would that Ed's red gun cleaner that we use work on this or is it best to use soluble oil with a muzzle loader? You could use just about anything. A lot of, over the years, you know, you read different books and they're talking about bear's pee and beaver's poo and stuff. And an old friend of mine, Dr. Leo Layden, before he died, one of the greatest muzzle loaders around he was. And he said to keep it simple. Sounds good to me. And so what I do is I... So all that, all that WD now, is that pretty much finished and clean? That's, that's it. I'll just drain it off, wipe it down, oil it, put it together, and it goes in, goes in the thing. I, and, I will and that's all it is. I've always heard that black powders are very hard to clean, but that didn't look too hard at all. No. And you will find... The methods that I'm using, because they were passed on to me by Dr. Leo Layden, that you will have minimum amount of cleaning time compared to using all sorts of greases and patch lubes and stuff. And he just said to me, throw all that stuff away, just get good old dishwashing liquid, 70% dishwashing liquid, 30% water, put a little bit of soluble oil in with it, and if you want to stop it because uh, soap will go off and start smelling so you put a bit of uh, ammonia in it and it'll last for years and years and, so, and when you shoot I can shoot this gun a week and it, it wouldn't have much it wouldn't have any more dirt than that's in that bucket right now because I'm using the wet patches and every time I push that ball down with those wet patches, it's cleaning my barrel. Hmm, so it's proof in the pudding, use a wet patch. So that's it, Barry. That's it. You've cleaned it, so now you would put it back together, oil it, and put it in the, in the gun safe. Yep, and I normally lubricate it with uh, lanolin, lanagard. Oh yes, of course, up here of the tropic heat, because yeah, of the humidity. Gun oil, you buy gun oil out of the shops and stuff, that gun oil is so fine, it will allow dust to settle. That dust will absorb moisture. Moisture starts rust. With lanolin, it puts a thicker coating on the gun. Once the fluorocarbon is dissipated, you're left with a tacky, very hard tacky coat. Look, stuff lands on the tacky coat. It doesn't penetrate onto your metal and consequently no rust. Yeah, so it's now clean and uh, I'll just put it back together again and uh, back into the armory. So that was black powder shooting today. Thanks that, Barry. Yeah, thanks, Aaron.
I hope really? you got something out of it. I did, I enjoyed that. Appreciate your knowledge and time. Yeah, it's quite uh, unrealistic how accurate those things are, aren't they? I was quite impressed actually how accurate it was. And always remember firearm safety. God bless you all. God bless Australia and God bless firearm ownership. Thank you.